Hello, 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 making an afternoon video with the trees out there and the balcony door open and it is nice and gorgeous. And I want to talk about peer pressure in this video. So for anyone who has not thought about what that means and all the implications. Peer pressure is when someone is psychologically coerced or pressured into following some kind of fad or fashion or fascism too, you know, that's it comes from the same word origin. So fashion is very closely related to the word fascism. And someone on YouTube said, fascism? That only pertains to Adolf Hitler. So, and then he called me a bunch of names. Uh, no, it does not pertain only to Adolf Hitler or the Nazis. Everything is combed over onto that one particular subject. Everything is just constantly blamed like a scapegoat of some sort. So, yes, they did fascism, but so does the Muslim agenda do fasci fascism big time. You know, Black Lives Matter, Antifa, it's fascist. Okay. Fascism means there's a group or it, or one individual who forces everyone else into thinking and believing what that person or that group believes or thinks. You know, any of their so-called whatever family values or life ethics or whatever what what they believe in they will force it on other people they will coerce other people they will humiliate other people they will extort they will blackmail they will bully people into their views okay that's fascism okay so that can happen psychologically that coercion or it can happen physically you know so the Muslim agenda is the epitome of fascism people need to know that because it's not being talked about on the social media or in any media in any on any news channel everyone avoids that subject like the plague because they want to keep their constituents they want to keep their followers their viewers you know they're too afraid I'm amazed I'm still here on YouTube so Alex Jones has already been censored all the way out so on all kinds of social media websites they have kicked them out they did this in in a in a planned and and premeditated attempt so they all they sat together they had a summit meeting and they all kicked him out at the same time so this was this was a corporate move okay so the corporate agenda uses the Muslim agenda to create unimaginable division, civil unrest, wars, hatred, hate crimes, because they, when people are in fear, when the, when the public is in fear and not feeling so good, depressed, suicidal, then they can manipulate them the best then they can really get into people's brains they use their existing fears they use their their fear of social rejection they use their fear of 
being rejected by a partner or by someone they like or or I don't know just their social groups you know or their religion or whatever they're standing on whatever they're wherever they're working you know their careers their followers so the fear of losing that support the fear of losing respect you know and face as they call it so that's what the the corporate agenda uses their psychologists that work for them market psychologists that are particularly <laughs> some, it's it amazes me how someone can get into that field of market psychology to deliberately learn for i don't know from the from the bachelor to the master degree to for i don't know over four years and then do a dissertation on how to really manipulate people's brains it's amazing that this is even legal but yeah it is because it is it's a commodity it's a it's a tool of very wealthy corporations you know, to use a psychologist like this not just using lawyers that will that will also apply market psychology to some degree i wonder if they also learn that in their schools so but they probably have some they have some some backroom door schools for that as well so on how to really rip people off and manipulate them all the way and hook line and sinker you know, and get them reeled in and get and use them all the way and they know because most people what is th that's what they use the the word you know they they say most people are sheep in sheep's clothes like this here this is synthetic synthetic sheep so i am a free thinker in sheep's clothes <laughs> that's what i am on first glance i look like some kind of dork who doesn't know what is going on on second thought hmm she got me she sees right through me yes i do sorry i studied psychology too but i'm not going to use it against you richard berman and all the, the market psychologists and all the 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 people that politicians hire for their campaigns those people they use psychology against you they use you totally they use your fear your religious fear their, your fear of hell <laughs> you create your own hell right here in this lifetime so the more fear of hell the the more hell is being created in this lifetime okay that's how it works okay it's, it's karma cause and effect okay law of attraction this existing lifetime not beyond beyond is you're floating aimlessly in bliss okay? heaven okay for everyone believe me trust me for every every soul and every existence has a soul the tree this computer even okay you and your dog and your rabbit and even inanimate objects can contain a soul sometimes okay. when a soul decides i want to be a couch in this lifetime then that's what the soul will 
look for. This is the perfect couch. I want to be hanging out there in this in this couch. Okay, so I want to feel what it feels like to be a couch or a rug. I want to feel what it feels like to be stepped on. Okay. So if you want to know how how it feels to be stepped on, ask a rug. So they will tell you. But the rug doesn't mind because the rug uses that in order to create pattern formation. So when you look at a rug that has been shoveled around on the surface, you know, the hairs of it, then it creates pattern formation. It creates patterns. It creates images, actually, very often. Okay, and if you pay close attention, you can see images and it will have something to say to you. The world of metaphysics, the world of multidimensionality is endless. Okay, but people are afraid of that subject. They would rather stay away from it. My brain is already attuned to all of this. I don't need to eat shrooms in order to see it. So I see faces almost everywhere occurring in all kinds of pattern formation. So usually it's people that have to take these psychoactive drugs in order to get that 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 persistent download of ego society's values and norms to take a little break for a moment so that this the labeling and the identification and all of this takes a break for a moment then you can see the tree for what it actually is okay and then the drug wears out and they go back to their normal programmed from society ways the problem with all drugs including hallucinogenic drugs is that it will give you a glimpse for a moment but the moment you're back into that old groove you tend to forget what you saw or you tend to forget the meaning of it that's the most important part and most people are not even ready to see outside of their programmed ways of thinking so you need to go by you need to walk by you want to walk by here? Then I can blend this out. What's this here? <laughs> so, and the worst part is with all drugs, you know, people get, they get into habit. They get, they get addicted to it in a way that when the drug wears out, they get even more into that what they're trying to heal, actually. So the person who wants to take mushroom, hallucinogenic mushrooms, psilocybin, in any whatever form, they what they want to do is they want to, actually most people want to escape from the this the grimness of programming they want to escape from it that's already the completely wrong approach to this that's also something that Terence McKenna always warned people about he said those are not recreational drugs they're not recreational okay that's um it's more like a, a form of therapy if any but, and I only recommend this to people who are on their deathbeds already or so crippled with depression or like people who 
don't even have another option basically people who are who are maybe quadriplegic in a wheelchair or with serious health problems where they they feel like they are at the end of their lives for those people this can be very very helpful and and very therapeutic to give them a glimpse of what can what will come after they leave this space suit behind you know people take this so incredibly seriously this existence they take themselves so incredibly seriously that's what the ego does you know, the ego is real real dependent on this uh, this lifetime and this whatever that person is that body is in that lifetime the ego depends on that existence and on on the respect they get from other people this is this it's a sickening dependency okay so that has to be dissolved but for anyone who is young and who is not physically impaired or sick or something for someone who's not at the end of their lifetime that's a real bad choice to make to take any kind of hallucinogenic drug or any drug as a matter of fact you know, any any toxic substance stay away from it as far as possible and stay away from the people who push it on you or who take that around you who are promoting it to you and who bully you into it who peer pressure you into it stay away from those people as well you're better off alone than with those type of people and i'm not saying these type of people bad or bad or now then it becomes another fad they're bad i want to belong to them no you don't okay so is you see how the the ego always loops itself back into something no they're not bad these people they're victims okay of peer pressure again and i talked to paul about this earlier i said people you know what i see on the internet people will take any peer group and make the and and try to belong to that any peer group so it wouldn't matter what that peer group or that religion is actually doing to the world and to them there are people that poke holes into their skull it's some kind of cult so people will do anything i i've seen this on the internet it, this is so incredibly depressing and infinitely sad what i see what people are willing to do to get that that respect from their elders of school whole drill drilling religions or whatever religion child r murdering religions out there so i mean there's a whole panel of completely insane religions and cults out there and islam is among those it's islam is the most threatening one of all it it snowballs at an alarming rate and picks up people who want to belong to some kind of group and i see that people will accept anything 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 it wouldn't matter what it is It's the murdering people 
that's cool, you know, it's a religion, it's a culture, we, we murder, you see, that's, that's what we do, that's, that's what some people in Africa said, to, when they were interviewed, we kill you, see, that's, it is what we do, so, I, ha I mean, I had to laugh about this, but because it is, it's so incredibly absurd. <clears throat> What they do is what 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 people do in Africa to the animals and to children. I don't even want to get into it. No, it's not just Africa, but there is. It's like a, it's, it's the epitome of this whole planet. What's happening there? What they do to the gorillas and um, it's it is it's beyond imagination. The suffering what they're what they're causing to the wild animals and all the other species, all these naive, innocent species that are living there. They, they don't see that coming, you know, this onslaught of, of violent human apes. And I'm not just calling them human apes. I don't want to be misunderstood. We're all human apes. We're apes, okay? This is scientific fact. Okay. We are apes. And then we get this, we get, there's more of the, the religious, religious indoctrination, you know, that puts shame into people that want to deny that we are apes, that want to deny that we are animals. They want to deny that we're sexual beings. They want to deny all of this. Friedrich Nietzsche already talked about in the 1800s about how incredibly stupid and retarded that is. So, and he, he was very blunt about society. That's why he was hated so much. He was hated by a lot of egos. And so was Jesus Christ. So, you know, they, the Jesus lovers, they love Jesus and they hate Nietzsche. Um, Nietzsche and Jesus are the same soul. Oh, that's so incredibly... <laughs> This is so incredibly annoying. Of course, they don't believe that, what I'm saying. But even if it wasn't true, what I'm saying, I know it's true, but even if it wasn't true, let's think a little bit outside of the box and see things from another perspective. So this elevating one person over others is dualism. Dualism does not work. Okay. It's, it does not move us forward in any way. Cultism, religiousness is not moving us forward in any way whatsoever. It causes more division, it causes more war, more hatred. That's all it does. Okay. It doesn't do anything else. Islam is the epitome of all of this. The absolute epitome of religiousness, cultism, everything that's bad. Everything that's bad about being brainwashed. The absolute epitome. And they are marching in and they are being utilized by the corporate agenda, by the people who, do, who are not religious, but have this thing with the greed going greed to the point of blindedness about the future outcome. Yeah. Those are the anti-visionaries, you know, the people, um, yeah, I would say, the people on the very top of the pyramid, the, the Rothschild bankers, maybe some other bankers, and some other extremely wealthy people.
extreme, they have accumulated such extreme wealth. That's not even public. I read that there are people that have, that might have already trillions of dollars okay, in Swiss bank accounts where this is being classified and hidden away as highly, highly, highly secret. <laughs> so, and those are the people who are using the market psychologists and strategists. They use psychological strategists, they, social strategists, you know, financial strategists that go way, way out of the range of regular chess move playing of within the field of economics. Okay. Those are economists that are that are venturing out into into dangerous territory, just like the market psychologists are with their strategies of reeling people in, that they go into unethical zones, okay? And then no one polices them because everyone else is busy with their own lives and people are not informed about what they're doing. There's tons of conspiracy theories and speculation going on. Most people don't have a clue on what's happening. Okay. And those conspiracy theories that you get to hear about from your favorite radio host or whatever, book writer, Jim Mars or David Icke, whatever these people are, okay. They or the Christian conspiracy theories, those conspiracy theories are, they are manufactured by the very market psychologists that are trying to make you turn against this or that person, public figure that does some, it's always the people that want to do good for the world that are being slandered that are being slandered viciously, vicious lies being put out against everyone who wants to do good in the world. Because obviously the corporate agenda sees everyone who wants to do good, like Ingrid Newkirk from PETA, you see what, what they're doing to her and her organization. You see the slander against them. It's relentless. Richard Berman is behind that. Richard Berman, market psychologist. He takes a lot of bribe money. He take it's not just bribe money, it's like actual paycheck in order to turn the public against people. This should be illegal. This is illegal activity in my view. Okay. This is highly unethical activity, what he's doing. But they bribe their way through every instance. They pay people off to be quiet, you know. Oh yeah, they all, whoever they're talking to, you know. They all, people in law enforcement, lots of people that will take that bribe money and put duct tape over their mouths and look the other way. That's corruption, okay. The human ape is corrupt, okay. And because of this, things are going downhill very fast. Okay. What's happening now with the riots is a deliberate attempt by the corporate agenda to turn people against Donald Trump. Why? Because Donald Trump cares. He's a good person. He wants to make the world better, and he is. And so the corporate agenda gets afraid of that because he might blow the whistle on the Rothschild bankers sitting on empty money. Okay, And if everyone says, oh, the emperor has no money anymore, then th th that money that the emperor sits on 
evaporates. Yeah? And that's exactly what they're afraid of will happen. That's why they killed Muammar Gaddafi. Okay. Muammar Gaddafi was a good person, a kind-hearted, compassionate person, constantly giving people money, constantly, constantly giving stimulus, money to everyone. They loved him. The, the public loved Muammar Gaddafi. In Libya, yes. And then that's why they create, that's why Barack Obama created Islamic State to take over Libya and many countries in the, in the Middle East. Also to take over Iran, which used to become already in the past, was run by other people that wanted to make it cosmopolitan, that wanted to steer away from the religiousness from the religious oppression. So then Ayatollah Khomeini got in and <clears throat> brought the extreme religiousness back and the oppression and everything. Okay, so we need to look at these things. So we need to look at the things the way they actually are. Okay. Is that violent religion making the world better? No. It makes the world worse. It makes all of us suffer. It makes all of us have nightmares, be afraid, get angry, be very worried about the future. Okay, And in the worst case scenarios, it brainwashes people into thinking, now with that they have an identity and they fight for the wrong people and they fight a war against innocent and good people and for oppressive dictators. And that's the reality of it. Bring this back to ground zero, meditate on it, and say no to any religion and any peer pressure and any fad, and any fascism, and any racism, and any divisive, div divisive group or thought school. Okay. Stand up for what's good. Stand up for love and compassion and freeing all animals, freeing all living beings. Okay? You guys take care. Bye-bye.